Hello and welcome to the module on uh, GIS data and data quality. And we're most So what is data quality? Well, first let's talk a little bit about some things that we need to understand. Data sets are rarely perfect. Um, and because of that, there's really no absolute quality standards out there. Uh, as far as if data is good or not. The third bullet point here, it's in red, is the one that matters the most. This is the definition of quality data. You see, when we talk about data quality, it all depends on how you use the data. So quality is defined as the fitness of a data set for a particular purpose. In other words, if the data is good enough for the job at hand, then the data has sufficient quality. In other words, the same data set might be unsuitable for uh, one use and adequate for another. And this is not uncommon. Uh, basically, as the users of the data, you have an ethical and legal responsibility to determine if data is sufficient for its intended use and you want to disclose that if people are going to use um, any of your analysis uh, in any way. There's different types of accuracy as well. So one of the big ones is geometric accuracy. And so geometric accuracy is really nothing more than is something where it says it is. Uh, and this can be a little complicated. There's a certain amount of error uh, in the data depending on how it was collected. And then there's other errors that occur as it's processed. And a lot of times these errors that we incur or generate or create, they propagate during further processing of the data. And so small, tiny errors at some points in time become larger and larger um, the more and more that you do with the data. And so we've got a couple of examples here. If we look at the picture in the top left, you've got a nice little community. And then in the top center, you've got a digital line graphic uh, representing this neighborhood. And you can see that it's not a perfect match with the roads, but there's one glaring issue. You see that road that jettisons off to the top of that image? And then when you look over at the... Uh, over at the actuarial photo, that road's not there. Now a couple of things. Is the photo newer than the other data set? Was there ever a road there? You don't have any way of knowing just from looking at it. But if you investigate it further, you might look at when the data was created, when it was updated, and you might find that the aerial photos are newer or older than the other layer of the system. That is the digital, <coughs> excuse me, that is the digital raster graphic. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize now for all the videos that I narrate. I don't know why, but when I start doing this, it makes me uh, a little sleepy. And I will yawn from time to time, and I apologize if that makes you sleepy, because I know it's already enough of a chore to stay awake listening to me talk on a video. So, um, we'll try to keep it as interesting as we can, and I'll try not to yawn any more than I absolutely have to. Deal? Alright, back to learning. Um, so, looking at that middle map, you don't really know. And so, you have to... You know, investigate it further. If we look to the bottom right to that image, you'll notice that we have a uh, uh, a feature that we have overlaying over an aerial photo, and you notice the road uh, feature doesn't line up with the road in the picture. And so the little caption says, "Which road is correct? What errors might occur in both locations?" So there's a couple of things. When you look at that. Uh, feature that we've constructed, you'll notice it's made of a segment of a lot of straight lines. <clears throat> so, and depending on how the, what scale you created that at, it may line up really nicely with that aerial photo. But when you zoom in or zoom out and you change that scale, that ratio of distance on the map to distance in the real world, 
uh, it won't look as good. And it might also be that, for example, maybe the image was projected later or in a different projection. It could be any number of things that could be causing distortions. But this is primarily a scale issue, an issue of the scale at which the feature was created and what looks like a straight line at one resolution is not a straight line uh, at another. There's also thematic accuracy. Thematic accuracy uh, speaks specifically to the accuracy of the information that is expressed by the theme of the map. And so an example of this would be something like if you have a thematic map that is talking about the tree crown density. And so this is a measure of how closely the tree tops um, come together to, to form an enclosed canopy. And the more dense that it is, the more uh, closer together the tree canopy is, the less open space. And so that's the sort of theme of the data layer. What we have to figure out is how accurate is it? So you have to ask yourself questions. How is it measured? How accurate are the measurements? What could be sources of errors? These are the things that you have to think about. Um, looking at the bottom right, we see a density map there, and we have different categories of density, 0 to 40%, 40 to 70, 70 to 120. How do we come up with those classifications? Were they random? Were they generated by a non-biased uh, uh, algorithm like Jinx Natural Breaks? These are all things that you have to consider when you're trying to decide if the, ac if the data set meets your standards and thresholds for accuracy. I've talked a little bit about resolution before, so I just want to kind of go over it and make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. When we talk about resolution, um, the simplest thing to think about is the sampling interval of measurements. So when we look at spatial sampling, it's the distance between GPS points along a road. It can also be the size of the pixel for elevation or satellite images or any kind of raster data. When we look at thematic maps, how fine was, this, was the scale that we measured at? Uh, were the data classified after the measurement? These are the sort of things that greatly can impact <coughs> uh, data quality. And temporarily, how frequently was the data sample? Was it daily, monthly? every 10 years. You know, this is sort of the resolution. It's the frequency with which we did things. The frequency of, of collecting data points. In other words, when we were drawing that feature, top right, over top of the aerial photo, how far did we go before we want to click? Now one of the things that you'll learn to do in GIS, um, there's features to, uh, for tracing lines where after you move a specific distance it automatically drops a point. And so you, if you have a feature like that road like that that you want to create a feature over, you take the aerial photo, you turn on the tool, and you simply take your mouse and run it along the road. And every X distance, whatever you select, it creates a point, and then when it's done, it links the points together. Technically, it's not points, they're nodes. But it's the same basic concept. It lays down an XY uh, point at which the straight line changes its vector into a new direction. And ultimately when you do this, um, you're going to get this line that has this kind of uh, herky-jerky shape. The closer those points are together, the more and better it will fit that line. But if you zoom out further, making the resolution, in other words, the ratio of distance on the map to distance in the real world uh, different uh, so that you're seeing uh, much more area real world per unit map uh, then it may look fine. Precision is an entirely different animal. Um, precision is simply the number of significant digits in a measurement. It's the statistical variable of r variability of a repeated measurement. It's not the same thing as accuracy. Precision is simply how precise or um, the level at which we measure or count something. And so if we're at one significant figure uh, or two significant figures, you know, if you're in projected coordinates, 
you're looking at something like a meter, uh, 0.1 meter means that your precision is at best 10 centimeters or a tenth of a meter, 0.1. If you're at two digits, it is at best a hundredth of a meter or one centimeter. If you're in, for example, angular degrees, uh, one decimal or one, yeah, one degree, for example, is like 110 kilometers. And so uh, 0.1's not that accurate. Uh, 0.1 in a projected coordinate system, in terms of like meters, would be fairly accurate. So. Um, Precision gives you some idea about how accurate things could be, but accuracy still reflects how well that that data uh, is inspired from the real uh, feature. So remember, GPS units report locations to the nearest meter. Uh, 20 measurements, same spot. You calculate out your standard deviation of 5 meters. means that your precision is about plus or minus 10 meters. So you're out there and you're taking a precise measurement of what? Well, who knows. But uh, it's never as good as what you think it is. Metadata. Metadata is important for a lot of things. One thing um, that happens a lot is people don't devote the time that we need to with metadata. And so um, we don't make it, we don't update it, we don't share it. And then we go looking for data, we find data from someone else, and we go looking for the metadata because we want to know things like um, when it was made, who made it, what was the scale and the precision and the accuracy and all that kind of stuff. And then we can't find it and then we get really upset with the people that did that, all the while sharing data that we make that we don't do that. So don't be that person. Create the metadata for any data that you plan to make available to others. Metadata simply contains information about the data that people need to understand the data and evaluate its quality. Metadata is the primary way you will evaluate data to determine if it meets your thresholds for quality for your project at hand. These should be provided with everything and it really uh, any data that's going to be used by anyone other than yourself um, or it's going to be used multiple times by yourself, or it's going to be used in the future by yourself, you should go ahead and make metadata. If it's some quick temporary thing that you're just going to make a map for and it's going to be finished up and done, then you know it's kind of a waste of time to go through all that hassle. If this is something that's going to have meaning, use, and purpose over time, create metadata.